Hey fellow Backyard Boyers, Nick here. Today I wanted to talk about making strings. And today I wanted to specifically talk about string material. Now I've gotten a lot of questions and comments and people requesting more string videos. So I had the perfect opportunity. Today I went down to one of the local hardware stores just down the street and there they're going out of business and they're moving their location or they're trimming down this one location so they had a lot of things on sale. So I managed to pick up this spool of uh, polypropylene twine. It says six dollars on it but really I only paid a dollar fifty for this which is great because normally I think it's about twenty dollars 3,000 feet of heavy-duty polypropylene twine. I also picked up some other common hardware store twine, like Cecil, nylon mason twine, cotton twine, jute. I also picked up some kite twine. Some nice lightweight twisted polyester. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to show you how to test for a string's breaking strength and how to use that breaking strength to design a string. I'm also going to be testing my favorite saddle stitching thread which I no longer use for strings because it's so stretchy but I use this for everything else. I'm going to be testing our polypropylene and I'll also be testing some B50 Dacron string material. So the way I'm going to test these different things, I'm just going to take these two wood blocks, mainly to protect my hands. I'm going to wrap the twine securely around the block, wrap the twine securely around another block, just enough so that they're locked into place. And using the blocks as handles, I'm going to place this on my tillery tree on my bathroom scale, and I'm going to pull it until it breaks, and I'm going to record the the moment it breaks so you, guys, so you guys can get a rough estimate of the breaking strength of each type of twine. Now ideally for a 30 pound bow you want a string that's let's see that's for a 30 pound bow you want a string that is at least 150 pounds of breaking strength. If you're going to be tying knots in it then 200 pounds of drinking strength is a good measure. So we're going to test these out and you'll get to see what will make a good bowstring as far as breaking strength goes. Here's my scale. As you can see here, what I've got is I've got my tillering tree right here on top of it. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the particular twine that I have and I'm going to be putting it on the top of the tillering tree and pulling down until it either breaks or reaches the hundred mark. If it reaches a hundred pounds then I'm going to strip the strip the twine in half and test it again. That way we can figure out what the breaking strength of each twine is. So I'm going to start with the yellow polypropylene. We're going to try this real quick. Okay. So we got 100 pounds. So I'm going to strip this in half and I'm going to try it again. All right. So I've stripped the polypropylene in half, as you can see. Now I'm going to test this piece out. Oh, and I'm still getting a hundred. 
So I'm going to strip this piece in half again and then we're going to test it. Now I'm going to be testing the quarter strand of polypropylene. See how this does. Okay. <sighs> okay. So that looked like 45 pounds. So that means this quarter strand here takes a, takes 45 pounds before it breaks. So what that means is, let's see. So that means that the whole strand, the single twine, takes about 180 pounds to break. So that one strand alone would technically be enough for a 30 pound bow. So now we're going to be using the braided mason twine. So according to the packaging, it's rated at 7 pound load limit, which is different than breaking strength. So let's give this a try. Okay, so now I'm going to test the breaking strength for you guys. Alright, so I've got about a hundred. Since it's braided, it would be kind of difficult to split it apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and push it and see how far it'll go past 100. <sighs> okay. So we're at 140 and nothing. So theoretically, this should be just enough for a 30 pound bow. Now this mason twine is has a little more strands than what I usually see, but there you go. You just need number one mason twine, nylon. Okay. Okay, so the mason, mason twine I had, the nylon, had eight strands in it. So what I did was I managed to take it apart, so here's one strand. So we're going to test the breaking straight strength of this one strand. So here we go. Alright, so the breaking strength of that one strand was about 35 to 40 pounds. So we'll just say 35 to be on the safe side. So that means that that single strand of mason twine or mason line was had a has a breaking strength of 280 pounds. So even by itself, it would be okay for most bows. The only problem is, is that because it's so thin and nylon is so stretchy. I would probably double up the strands, giving you 560 pounds, but the string would stretch a lot less. And it would be a, probably, judging about how thin this is, it would give you enough body for a decent string. And it's perfect because you can just use the two strands and make a conic twisted string. Alright, so now that we've tested that, we'll move on to another twine. Up next, we're going to be testing the Cecil twine. Now this stuff is very coarse, and it's actually quite variable. If you can see, 
you've got this section which is really thin, and then this section which is thicker, and then you have some very loose parts. So we're just going to try this out and see how it does. This stuff is also fairly thick on its own, I'd say you could probably take two strands of it and would make a comfortable size for a bowstring. Anything more than that and you'd be your string would be a little bit too thick. So let's try it out. Okay, here we go. Alright, so that looked like about 90 pounds. Okay. Just so you know, don't try this at home. Probably not doing this the most safe method. But we had about 90 pounds before it broke. So if you use two strands, that gets you 180 pounds, and because plant fibers don't really stretch, 180 pounds is enough for a 35 pound bow. Just keep in mind that natural fibers are a little more temperamental, and they tend to break down a lot faster. So even though it can handle it, you're not getting much cushion as far as, as durability. So expect the string to once it starts wearing down it'll just snap on you but that's true of most natural material strings like hemp linen it's also important if you're making a string out of this to put a serving on it but we'll get to that later now we're going to test just the household cotton twine So according to the packaging, it has a one pound load limit. So I'm going to see what that means as far as breaking strength. Alright, so here we go. We're going to test this out. Alright, so it had about a 10 to 12 pound breaking strength. So, just to be on the safe side, we'll say it has a 10 pound breaking strength. So, just to be on the safe side for a 35 pound string, you would need. you would need uh, 15 strands of this. So that would be... So that would be approximately, your string would have to be approximately this thick, which is pretty thick, compared to, say, the mason twine, where you would need about Two. And actually, this much cotton is about as, is actually weaker than this much mason twine. So just to keep in mind, so cotton is not the best option for the string. Though there are different grades of cotton twine, I've got another type of cotton twine that we'll be testing out. <laughs> 